Hello everyone and welcome to this extra lightweight Java Game Library 3D game tutorial. I wasn't intending to do an extra tutorial this week but the tutorial was turning out to be a bit too long for one video so I thought I'd break it down into two episodes. So today is just theory, no programming and on Saturday we'll do the actual coding. This video is just going to introduce the OBJ file format which we'll be programming our game to read in on Saturday. So if you're already familiar with the OBJ format then you can just skip this video and do the one on Saturday instead. So in our game to load up a model we need these arrays of model data. One array for the vertex positions, one array for the texture coordinates of these vertices, and finally an array of indices that determines which vertices are connected to which. Now, currently we don't have any good way of creating these arrays of data, and we've had to hard code them into the code so far. Obviously this is very time consuming, and for more complex models than a cube, it would be pretty much impossible. What we want to be able to do is to create our models in a 3D modeling software and then somehow convert those models into the arrays of data that we need to load up the models in our game. So I'm using Blender here which is a pretty cool 3D modeling program and there are loads and loads of tutorials on YouTube where you can learn how to use it if you don't know already. It's free to download and a download link for it is in the description of this video. And I've also put a download link for this model here in case you don't want to make a model yourself. So, once you've got a model, you need to export the model from Blender to save the model in a certain file format. And we're going to want to export the model to this wavefront.obj file format. Then before you export it, you need to make sure that include normals, include UVs and triangulate faces are all selected. And then you can go ahead and save the OBJ file. Save it wherever you want, but make sure that you move it into the game's res folder because that's where our game is going to try and read it from. So you'll now have an OBJ file like this one that contains all of your model's data. So you can open up your file in Notepad and see what it looks like. First we've got a few random things here at the top and then we've got a list of lines with the letter V in front of them. And these are a list of all the vertex positions in the model. So each one of these lines is a 3D coordinate of a vertex in the model. So that's good. That's pretty much exactly what we need, an array of the vertex positions. Then we've got a load of lines that start with VT. And this is a list of all the UV texture coordinates in our model. Again, that's exactly what we need, so that is pretty much perfect. Next we have a list of 3D coordinates in these lines beginning with Vn. And these are actually the normal vectors at the vertices, which we don't need at the moment, but we will be using them next week, so they're also pretty important. So, so far it seems like this file format is basically perfect. It contains an array of the vertex positions, the texture coordinates, and the normal vectors which we'll be needing next week. It would seem that all we need now is the indices. Well, unfortunately it's not quite that simple. Our game needs the arrays of data to all be in the same order. So the first vertex position uses the first texture coordinate and the first normal vector. And the 23rd vertex position in the list uses the 23rd texture coordinate and the 23rd normal vector. That way we can use our index buffer to say, for example, connect vertex 2 to vertex 4 to vertex 1. And it will automatically know the texture coordinate and normal vector for each vertex as well. Unfortunately, the lists of data in the OBJ file are ordered in a seemingly random way. So the first vertex position in the list might need to use the 6th texture coordinate in the list, or the 10th normal vector, or something like that. And that's what this next set of data in the OBJ file tells us. The F at the beginning of each line stands for face, and so each line represents a triangle in the model. Each of these three blocks is one vertex of that triangle, and the three numbers are references to the vertex position, texture coordinate, and normal vector that that vertex uses. So this line here is saying that this particular triangle is composed of the 77th vertex position in the vertex position array, which has the second texture coordinate and the first normal vector in the list of normal vectors. 
and that vertex is connected to the 78th vertex position which uses the 4th texture coordinate and the 8th normal vector and that is connected to the 73rd vector position which uses the 3rd texture coordinate and the 15th normal vector. So from this list of triangles we know which texture coordinate and which normal vectors belong to which vertex positions and we also know how the vertices are connected into triangles so we can construct the indices array from this. So what we need to do today is to create a method that can read the data from an OBJ file and convert it into these arrays of data that our loader in our game needs. So this method is first going to read in all the data for the vertex positions, texture coordinates and normal vectors and then using the faces info we will rearrange the texture and normal vector lists so that they are in the same order as the vertex positional data list. Just a quick note about a couple of problems with this OBJ parser. Firstly, texture seams won't be correctly converted in our parser, and this is because a texture seam sets two different texture coordinates to one vertex, which isn't possible in our game, as each vertex can only have one texture coordinate. So to get a texture seam to work, you'll need to duplicate the vertices along the seams, and you can do this by doing edge split on the edges where you want the seam to go. Secondly, you have to set the whole model to use smooth shading, because otherwise it will set two or more different normal vectors for each vertex which our game can't handle, so don't forget to do this. If you want to set an edge to be hard, then you have to once again use edge split, which duplicates the edge's vertices, allowing for multiple normals to be used. This unfortunately therefore means that all texture seams will automatically be hard edges, which will show up a bit when we do the lighting next week, but it shouldn't be too obvious. If it does bother you, then it is definitely possible to alter the parser slightly so that it can deal with the texture seams, but we'll save that for another day. So that is it for today, but on Saturday we'll be using this knowledge to program the parser method that will allow us to load models like this into our game. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this video, have a lovely Friday, and I will see you all tomorrow for the devlog video, and then again on Saturday for the second part of this tutorial.